first time I did a shot of dope. It was the best feeling I ever had in my life. And the first time I killed somebody, and it was such a rush. And it was just like that shot of dope. Every time I did it, it was that rush again. And I started chasing that high. I am hatred. When you look at me, you look at hate. When I look at you, I look at hate? When you look at me, you know what hate is. I don't know what love is. Two words I don't like to use is love and sorry, because I'm about hate. Sells blames much of his murderous rage on sexual abuse he says he suffered as a child. You also killed children. I some get killed, yes. Now, why would that happen? I didn't want them to live through the pain I lived through. There's not a day I, that goes by that I don't think about her. What did you do to her, sir? Her neck was cut. How did you do that? With a knife. Do you have anything to say to her, the little girl who survived? I guess you'll relay this message too. Uh, what's your name? Martin. Martin? Yes. Can I call you Tommy? Oh, without a doubt. I don't think she really wants to hear what I get to say. So what if I called you something that you didn't like? And you'd think about killing me? Well, if we was in a fight and... You know, get your head down in the concrete, then, you know, so be it, but... What happens when my head goes down to the concrete? Well, what do you think happens? It cracks like a coconut. And then what happens? You die. Uh, which ruse would work with which woman? I mean, you had to have a way of feeling them out and um, saying, I think ruse number one, two, three will work with this woman. How, how, tell me, explain that process to me. Well, one of them was, as, you, as I, they would, a uh, woman would get in the car. She's already in she's the car? She's in the car. Let's say she's always in the car, We're driving down the road. And she first she wants to see my ID. So I whipped out my ID, and with my ID would be my I put my finger over my driver's license to hide my name. Mm -hmm. But on the opposite side was um, pictures and a picture of my son. And then see to see my son, and they would know I was a probably normal person. But I you were using really using your son as part of your ruse. This is only uh, at the time I didn't want to picture my ex-wife there, so I had to have a picture of my son. Sure, you had to you, you had to make it sound good. I had a driver's license on one side, my ID, and then when I showed my and then the next the next picture was was my son, so that was. And uh, in the vehicle, I had some, uh, always had some, not always, but had some of my son's stuff in there, you know, um, that he left in there, or some Star Wars or something like that. And, you know, so there was, it was uh, like a family setting. In your, every, in your vehicle? Yeah, so every time I opened up my wallet, there would be a picture of my son on one side, uh, you know, behind my ID, here's my ID, I hide my name. Flip it over, and there's my ID and uh, my son's picture on the back side, and they'd see that, and that would uh, lower any big defenses. Mm -hmm. And you know, kids' as toys, eight-year-old toys on the on the dash. Was, the only thing that would be better than that would be to have your son in the car with you. That that would be a, a, a incredible ruse. Uh, that happened once. What happened? Uh, I, it was uh, July 18th, I think it was my brother's birthday. That weekend I picked up uh, a woman on Pack, Pack Highway and Matthew was next to me in the seat and she hopped in and, and I took her over to uh, in the South, South Airport area and um, 
took her uh, into an area and uh, my son was there and I, I killed her. I'm real sure my son didn't see it. But that only happened one time. But that was a pretty good, pretty good ruse. Mm -hmm. So why didn't you do it again? Well, well for one thing, the um, I didn't want my son to see it, see that happen again, because I was, I was. Uh, that's when I was really. Um, Killing a lot of them, mm -hmm. and uh, another thing, it never came to an opportunity to, uh, uh, again to do it. I didn't. I mean, uh, I had him in my truck uh, one time. He was sleeping, and I picked up another prostitute that didn't date her. So hey, so 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 tell me what happened this morning. Well, I this morning, um, I got picked up by the, the local cops because uh, I was, well, in, in a public school and I wasn't supposed to be there. What were you doing over there? Um, making a fool of myself. Uh, I slipped in through the uh, the food service entryway while they were unloading food, uh, or or well, they weren't more food. It was just crates, you know, nondescript boxes and things like that. They weren't labeled, and. Uh, they, uh, they let me through. I, I even showed my ID to one of the staff there. They let me through. And uh, they let me walk all through that school. And I got to, I, because I had already graduated there, I already knew where I was going. Because they didn't want to take a trip with me to somewhere we should never need to go. Because I saw, I thought I was speaking to a ghost. Why were you over there? To confess my love for a woman that I believed in my heart I was never to be able to love because she would never be able to love me from her grave. Is she a student? What do you mean she by that? She was a student. All I know is her name was because she came first as Terry to me as my first love when she was black. And then she came again as Kyla. Kayla. She was lighter than that. And then she became darker toned, and her name was Alexandria. But that Claire tried to screw me with fire, trying to get me with a sex offender, and that cheapened the level of that she thought I was. Because she found two pistols in the woods. So let me ask you, so, so you were over there, right? Why did you have the hatchet? Shouldn't a boy always be able to walk around in Virginia with his tomahawk? Well, not at a public school, though, right? What's public about it? You just said it was public about uh, 30 seconds ago. And so was that Commonwealth of America that I just showed to you. And it could have been version A or version B. Hmm? But we have 26 letters in our alphabet, so you tell me. Let me ask you this. When, when did you graduate from there? 2007. 2007. All right, very cool. So obviously you knew the school like in and out. Yeah, I grew up there. I spent my four years there and, you know, I made friends, but I didn't really fit in. But, you know, here's the thing. I, I was not so much of a loner that I couldn't make friends. I was not in some other frequency or universe coexisting with this, this one because this is glass and this is not a fiction because I can go and you're gonna hear it. Because right. I know things about the universe that no man's ever supposed to know. But guess what? If we all get to learn those things and if we can all just gird our loins and face the fact that terror exists in our minds first and then is then it comes from our hands and our mouths and not our blood or our spit or our fluid or our stool because there was never 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 such a thing as 
a genetic weapon so, or a blood weapon. So did you think that you belonged over there at the school this morning? Yes. I felt that that was my alma mater. I didn't go to college. I'm a working boy. But I, my, my daddy who, who loved me, not the monster that I painted him to be, but the dad who the reality I choose is not the scary one. So you said you're a working boy. What is it you do? I weld. So you're a welder? But no. I was a cook first, but I were washed dishes at Chick-fil-A. Okay. And now you're a welder. But that's only because I went from Chick-fil-A to the Marine Corps. And from the Marine Corps, so you I went to my desert of despair because no one wanted me here. So you, so you spent some time in the Marines? I spent some time. And then I moved on when I attempted suicide. But I'm not here to talk about my reasons why. But I'll say this. If a pappy don't teach his daddy to teach his son, that five beers don't equal six, and six don't equal five, and there's a reason for that. And if you don't understand that, then you are wrong. And for me to talk in this accent in any other place than a southern state of the United States of America, because I profaned this great country by bringing to light the sins of the Vichy Frenchmen who allied with Nippon in World War II to make the world's glue undo. Let me ask you this. Yes. A lot of people will see the story tonight and they'll hear that you were in a school with a hatchet and they'll say he was there to hurt someone. Well, guess what? There weren't nobody there but people who weren't supposed to be there. And I was the only one that wasn't supposed to be there. I wasn't talking to ghosts. I wasn't talking to myself. But you know what I was doing? I was reciting or practicing my own monologue. Something I learned as a thespian, not a lesbian. Were you planning, I mean, were you over there to hurt some water? No, but you gotta understand, when a boy loves a girl and when a man loves a woman, he's gotta be able to lay the hammer aside or put down the pen and pick up his ax before the sword, before the rifle, before the pistol, before the venom. I have no idea what that means. Good. Because no one should. Not even me. I, I hope against hope that I, I truly did make it all up and that I'm as unstable as a boy who loved horses but was never able to work in a stable because horses were commodities. But they were once works of art, even though they were living beings. So, so you weren't over there to hurt anyone? No, the only one, the only one who asks if I was there to hurt should be the judge who's shouting at me and telling me what I did wrong because he's gonna yell at me like my daddy should have and told me that my home was mine and that there was never any lies to try and dig up and realize and if he's being beaten down or shot for those very crimes that I say that's because he's guilty put that in your pipe and smoke it so they let you ride in today right through the door hmm yeah, I guess you could say that. Because no one should go through this hell. Because if I get to score all three, then I'm the only polynomial man who gets to marry three because I only ever wanted to fall in love once. And if I was tricked, duped by fate, or if we live in a world where there is no fate and we are manipulated, by people who are pulling our strings and that the the events and encounters that happen in our lives were never in our own hands, well, then that's a waking nightmare and no one should ever be able to say, I understand why he's crying. I understand why she is shivering in her daddy's arms. 
I know why he feels compelled to have sex with other men because he feels that he's not good enough except to be passed around like a peace pipe. I mean, have you been diagnosed bipolar or anything like that? Yes, because it is a thing. Because it was something that somebody felt that me should be diagnosed with. All right, well, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. All right, Cor, same group. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good. Okay, thank you. Which one of the interviews did you find the most disturbing and why? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you think this video is interesting, leave a like and you can also subscribe to my channel for more similar content like this.